not even out of the first month of the year, and somehow, I already have a favorite title that is definitely going into my top 10 list for this year. It's no secret that horror games of the 90s have left a cultural impact on those that have played them, most notably Silent Hill and Resident Evil. And with the advancement of tools and game engines, it's now more attainable than ever to make a game of your own in the same vein. There's just something about these graphics that stick with you, that layer of low-poly crust that leaves this dingy and dismal look, the graphical limitations that made developers get creative and as a result, create some haunting and memorable experiences. Flash forward to today, and you'll find that there's been a PS1 horror renaissance in the last few years, and it's been nothing short of glorious. It's honestly incredible to go on Twitter and just see all these passion projects that are in the works by passionate fans who want to recreate the moments we felt when we were kids. Now more than ever, it seems like a gold rush to climb to the top of that crusty, low-poly mountain. I've even dabbled in this myself, learning via tutorials and creating my own assets, creatures, and whatnot just for fun. But make no mistake, solo game dev is one of the hardest things you can do. It takes a village, and you don't always have access to said village. You have to do everything on your own. Story, character and asset design, modeling, texturing, learning a game engine, learning to code in said game engine, the soundtrack, bug testing. It's a lot of work, and I give kudos to anyone who's able to make or publish a game on their own. And that's why in today's video, I wanted to shine a spotlight on a game that I think has reached that Silent Hill perfection we haven't seen in quite some time. Lake Haven Chrysalis. The game itself was created and designed by Tingle155, Danny Arcadia, and Rob TLS. Links to their channels in the description below. One of the creators in particular, Danny Arcadia, is someone on YouTube that I've been following for quite a while. If making PS1 style horror games is a medium that you're interested in learning, they make some really well made tutorials for how to make your own characters, Resident Evil style inventory systems, and a bunch of other useful tips. It's honestly a very rare thing when creators are willing to share their secrets to what makes them so successful, so be sure to check them out after this and give them a sub for all their contributions. So I had no knowledge that this game was even a thing that was being created, but color me surprised when I saw this game shadow dropped and just screamed everything I loved about the original Silent Hill. For $3? I knew I had to get this. You play as Detective Zeke Reynolds, a Kansas police officer who receives a phone call one night for a missing person by the name of Eleanor Robertson. A friend of hers is concerned, and she hasn't heard back from Eleanor in quite some time, so she wants you to go out and investigate. Will this be a by-the-book investigation, or something much stranger? To say this game is atmospherically rich is an understatement. Right from the moment you step out of the car, you're met with nothing but the sound of your own footsteps crunching against the grass, the hum of cicadas, and the calling of the creatures of the forest. Letters are piled in the mailbox, a desperate method of contact to make sure Eleanor is okay. Much like its inspiration, this game uses silence as an effective device, creating moments of both uncertainty, wariness, and dread. The absence of sound is then created into tense moments with tracks that have a pulsating drum beat, making you question if you're actually safe. Everything about the environments and atmosphere is perfectly done right and had me engrossed in my experience the entire time I played. I think it says a lot about the design of a game if it gives you this curious feeling of wanting to solve a mystery the whole way through while also simultaneously being too freaked out to press on out of fear of what might be waiting for you. Each room in the game is accompanied with a perfect piece that definitely fits the vibe it's going for. And of course, no horror game would be complete without a cozy, safe room. Another thing I personally loved is how the save item in this game is a nice warm cup of coffee. As an avid coffee drinker myself, I approve. Beyond just the use of music, the overall design and the use of texture is used to perfection. Everything has this crunch to it, and it really feels like I've stepped into a forgotten game that was professionally made on the PS1. From the layout of the house, to the field surrounding it, to the underground caves, I couldn't notice a single blemish, and everything felt completely believable. I'd honestly often just find myself standing in different locations, just soaking in the moment and enjoying what this game had to offer. And some of these locations also totally pay homage to some other classically loved pieces of media, such as Twin Peaks. So for this review, I'm mostly going to talk about the gameplay and not spoil the story. I think it's far better to talk about how a game feels and plays and let the person watching the review experience the ride for themselves. The only time I'll really talk about the story is when it relates to the gameplay itself. 
Otherwise, I can't recommend checking this game out enough. I mean, it's only $3, it costs less than that crunch wrap you doordashed yourself every night. Yeah, I know you. Mostly because, same fam. Anyways, so as mentioned earlier, we're here to solve the mystery of what happened to Eleanor Robertson. We can start to piece together a story by reading behind left behind notes from various characters and puzzle solving to access areas that we're currently restricted from accessing. Much like its predecessors, we have access to a menu of items that we pick up along the way that we can use, inspect, and combine. Some to help us access new areas and others to help us solve puzzles, standard horror game stuff. Speaking of which, the puzzle portion of this game is also super well done. They can be quite challenging, and I love remembering things that you've looked at in other rooms as well as other things you've read that might give you a clue as to how to solve them. A few of these took me quite some time to solve, but that's mostly because of my smooth gamer brain, but it wasn't in a frustrating way. I really had to rack my brain to figure it out, and in the end it was super rewarding. Man, the controls. The controls themselves were super tight as well. Borrowing the control scheme straight out of classic PS1 horror titles, you move the D-pad to go forward and back as well as to pivot your character around. It's that classic tried and true tank control style that complements some of those juicy and obstructed corridors and locations. R1 is used to aim, X is used to fire, holding circle is used to run. I mean, if you played any classic horror games from the 90s, then you should have no issue adjusting and jumping right into the action. I also love how the control menu is literally the layout of the PS1 controller. Was this game made for me? I feel like this game was made for me. And the best part is, while it is that classic tank control style, it's never intrusive, janky, or in the way of gameplay. And the absolute best part of all this is, this is just the beginning. Like Heaven Chrysalis is currently a prequel to what's going to be a much longer and full-fledged PS1 horror title. It didn't take me very long to beat this, only clocking in at an hour and a half, but the experience I received far exceeds the price that I paid. If this is only the beginning, then I'm extremely excited to see what our developers have in store for us when the full game comes out. This is honestly one of the most promising PS1 horror projects I've seen in quite some time. This video will most likely end up being short, but it's only due to the game's short length and I can only go over so much without spoiling the experience. So if you're a diehard Silent Hill fan or Resident Evil fan and want to relive the same feelings you had back in the 90s when you experienced these titles for the first time, Lake Haven is more than worth your time. A link to the game will be in the description below as well as the creator's social media so you can stay up to date on the project. I hope you enjoyed this brief video on what I think is going to become an incredible horror experience. So support the creators, check out the game, and if you do end up playing it for yourself, let me know your thoughts in the comments. See you next time, and thanks for watching.